today. In our Power Player segment, we welcome Daryl Baboni. He figured out a way couples could deal with those honey-do lists. I'm a husband and I've gotten them, and actually both sides probably get them now. He created something called Honeydew Men, a company that is very successful and now franchising, going big. Daryl Baboni, welcome to Times Square tonight. Thanks, I, I love being here. This is such an exciting place to be. Um, I even brought you a little Honeydew bag and a little gift from our company. Thank Just you say thank so you for having us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We need what this is all about. And so while I peek in here, tell us how you came up with this idea. Well, actually, I tell everybody, if you own a home, you need us. If it's broken, we can fix it. If you buy it, we install it. That's kind of the Honeydew motto. But the name actually came, <laughs> I love the hat, looks good on you. <laughs> Yes. The name actually came from my uh, my mom came up with it. I was in college at the time, and you know we had to like I was trying to fix things. I was trying to figure out a way to make money, and um, she I was on the phone with her one day, and I was trying to figure out you know how how do I market myself. She's like, oh, you're a honeydew man, and I was like, what's a honeydew man? Like I don't do anything with melons. I don't work with honey. I'm not a beekeeper. <laughs> right, right. I'm like, what? What? Is She's like, oh, well, people from my generation, we made lists for our husbands. And it was called the honeydew list. It was yeah. stuff we needed them to fix around the house, and I was like, oh, that's kind of catchy. So. Of course, putting a little spin on it myself, I got a three by five index card because this is before we had the internet and before we had like you know Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. Right. I put up a job board and it said Honeydew Handyman Extraordinaire. Extraordinaire. For, yeah, for yes. hire. Okay. And I put it on and the name caught on like wildfire and the phone just went nuts and that has been 20 years and never looked back. Wow. And and when you started, you were one of the guys. Oh, look at that! <laughs> just in case it's a little hot here in Times Square, it is a little muggy actually. I'll do you, this. But because you were one of the guys doing it. You were, I mean, you, it was you to start. Now you have a whole team, you're franchising. Uh, but the story I heard was you were out there with your Honda Civic, yeah. right? With, the, yeah. with your ladder on top. I don't know why I'm envisioning him holding <laughs> the ladder and not strapping it down, but he had well, like one hand, he's trying, and, and going up on roofs, and, and you love it. Yep, the first, the first ad I ever took out said, uh, clean your gutters for 50 bucks, any house I can reach. And I was driving a Honda Civic, a little two-door hatchback. I uh, had no money, couldn't even afford a roof rack. I had a 32-foot ladder strapped to the roof. I had one strap going to the front bumper, one strap going to the back bumper. Yes. Ratchet tied, I'm just driving around in a little car. Now I'm 6'4", so you can imagine me in this little car just driving around. Milk crate of gutter parts in the back and, and some toolboxes, and, and that was it. That's, that's, that was the, the, the American dream, the story of the one-man shop. I started from nothing and now, you know, we do, last year we did 1,378 jobs, we have over 20,000 customers. Wow, and you're franchising, I need you at my house. <laughs> well, that's the plan is I get that from everybody. They're like, oh, I need you in my territory because everybody has a home, no one has time to fix it anymore. Yeah. So they gotta call someone and you know, you need a go-to. 15 go -to. different people. Yes, 15 different guys. If you need a floor guy, a roof guy, a siding guy, I tell people, says all the time, sometimes it's not that, you need a honeydew guy. And so we'll come in there and we fix everything. So we're going to franchise out into other territories and help people out. Now, uh, you're a hands-on guy, not only in starting your business, um, but you were up there on the roof doing stuff. And, and you even said you loved it, but there's a reason that you had to stop doing it. <laughs> Why is that? So um, the story I tell people is that God pushed me off a ladder, broke both my legs. God knocked me down a rock green and broke my back and my neck to teach me lessons that I would not learn. So the first one his was legs, uh, <laughs> his his back, his neck. neck, full body cast. I had a, I was in a body cast from my uh, from my neck to my waist for three months. Two years later, broke both my legs. I was in a wheelchair for another three months. Aqua therapy. I had to learn how to walk. Whoa. Another one, I fractured a hip. I tore a retina. So um, there's been a lot of obstacles that I definitely had to overcome in order to get to where I am today, for sure. So. Uh, which is amazing. That's a whole, we'll have to bring you back and talk to <laughs> just about those. Oh, which that's is a whole amazing. episode right there. <laughs> it's just, right, we'll clear the rest of the hour. Uh, for you, it's even bigger than just business. As this guy has this big smile, it's uh, about giving back and community. Yeah. I think you just won a uh, Citizen of the Year Award and a Good Samaritan Award yeah. <laughs> and uh, Top 500 Qualified uh, remodelers, which I'm sure is, uh, I don't know which one's more exciting to you. I don't know. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a crazy year, yeah. Um, this we, is your year, Yeah, this, is, this has definitely been the coolest year that we've, we've had. There's just uh, been awards tomorrow. I'm speaking at the United Nations building. Yes, um, oh my it, God. It's just, we're the faces of Westchester for Home Improvement for the Ma magazine there, which is awesome. Um, but all those, all those came from the roots of the company, which was the company's built on ethics, values, and morals. And I always tell people, if you don't have those three things, you, I guarantee you will not be successful in life ethics, values, and morals. And that came from a lot from my upbringing. So because I come from a broken home where my parents were divorced, my dad left when I was three, 
Um, and then just, you know, there wasn't any money to pay people to fix the house, so I had to learn to fix it. And I probably broke more things than I fixed. <laughs> I think I made my mom cry more than I made her laugh. Um, but <laughs> that's how we learn. And that was, that's where Honeydew Men was birthed out of. And uh, coming from that kind of environment where, you know, people had to step up and fill that role and, and volunteered to fill that father role they didn't have, I have the strong desire to give back. So that's right. where, you know, we have the Good Samaritan Award where we give jobs away to people in need that can't afford it. We have the, good, uh, we have the Honeydew Men Entrepreneurial Scholarship for uh, kids graduating high school that are showing entrepreneurial spirit. Right. Um, so we've created a lot of these things to try to help give back to the community and help other people. And um, I mean, even like one of the stories my wife doesn't like to tell so much, but it's just when the guy gets on TV and says, no one should be on the road. This is like the worst day ever, stay inside. Me and a couple of my guys, we grab our trucks, we grab our tow chains, we grab our flares, we grab chainsaws and we hit the road. Um, during Sandy, I even had, I remember I had about 10 trucks behind me and I was pulling trees off the road, helping people through. 9-11, uh, I was down here at Crown Zero helping out. Um, we were also during Sandy, we put together a crew that helped out on Long Island. Um, but it's just really, really important to me to help other people the right. way that I was helped when I was growing up. Well, it's obvious in some of the stories that you share, and this guy's uh, an in-demand speaker, uh, but this whole giving back piece I know you sometimes speak even at schools for kids just because you want to light up that next generation of people and entrepreneurs. I think we're in a generation of entrepreneurs. I think this is a very exciting time to be alive. This is a time where people are giving birth to new ideas and it's being encouraged to be creative and mm. think outside the box and to go to work for yourself instead of work for someone else. And it's just a very exciting age. And, um, and I have done a couple speeches at schools where they brought me in to talk to the kids um, about what that's like, but might not necessarily be a traditional business model you want to follow, and they bring me in to share my story. Daryl, it's time for the lightning round. You ready okay. for the lightning round? It's <laughs> right, time to play. Is it true, is it true, Daryl, that you are an opera singer or have been? <laughs> yeah, so there's something. It's true. That, there's something you wouldn't put two and two together, but yeah, um, so my degree's in the performing arts, uh, so I did a little singing, a little acting. Has absolutely nothing to do with contract and construction, but um, this is where my passions lie. I love working with my hands. I love building things. I love stepping back and seeing something. Um, so I haven't sang in 20 years. The last opera I did was La Traverta with the Deconic Opera Company. Um, I enjoy it. I do miss it a little bit, but uh, I love my interactions with my customers more. Um, That's so, nice. Yeah, that, well, that I won't is... put you on the spot and make you sing. <laughs> or duel, not that I have <laughs> any experience doing that. All right, is it true that you had tough, a tough time in school because of dyslexia? Yes, um, so I, I was put special ed uh, when I was growing up and uh, there's, there's a lot of kids like that that are going through where they don't necessarily fit the mold, um, but they didn't figure out what it was until I was in my 20s when they figured out I had dyslexia. And uh, the therapist at the time was said, she's like, you're borderline genius. She's like, all your brain power is being used to take the information in because you're receiving it wrong and you have to translate everything you're seeing in here and spit it back out the other way. But to go through that growing up and just kind of, there, there's a social stigma that comes with that and uh, overcoming that as well was, was a challenge for sure. Awesome. Is it true? Eagle Scout? Eagle, Eagle Scout, Scout, yes, All absolutely. Right, nice. 100% cool. Eagle Scout, Boy Scouts. I love the program. Um, That's so nice. Again, that helped fill that, that role of not having a father around when I was younger. The, the men in my church, the, the Boy Scout program, those things all came together, uh, and the Eagle Scouting program definitely helped make me the person I am today. As we get closer to uh, the end of this segment, I'm curious, what guides you down the path? Uh, you uh, seem to love what you do and love just being in the community, I and mean, you light up when you talk about it. Um, you said you would love just being out on, on the roof somewhere, uh, but you shouldn't after <laughs> getting into a body cast. Uh, what drives you? Um, Right now, the, the motivation and the drive really just comes from the heart, it comes within. I just, like you said, I love what I do, it's a passion. I talk about the, the company, Honey Do Men, was like my own child. Like, I gave it birth, I gave it ethics, values, and morals. I watched it grow and develop mm. into what it is today, into a living, breathing thing. And to step back as a father figure and look at that, um, there's just pride in that, like anyone would with their own children. Um, and that just, it just keeps me going and I want to do more with it. I want to, I want to, I want to write a book and I want to tell people about my, my, my journey. I want to go help more people. I want to speak and, and motivate people. Right. Um, so there's just, there's, yeah, there's a lot of and passion. the book is one of the next things that will be coming out and maybe by the time people see this, which is going to be called as of now. Uh, so there's two <laughs> books. One is called From Here to There, which is about my journey from coming from a broken home right. and from not having any money to building this multi-million dollar construction company. Um, and then that journey, and then the second book is called The Bridge, which is a five-step process uh, for anybody and how you can get from where you are today to where you want to be. It's just a matter of taking that step and walking through that door and overcoming that fear. 
exciting. All right, so last thoughts for young people, entrepreneurs, young people who maybe are going to be entrepreneurs who are watching this right now. Um, well, my thought for them is follow your heart and your desire. Uh, whatever is in here, you should let that shine through and put that out into the world. Let everybody know what's in here and follow your heart. In business, in life, in marriage, whatever it is, follow your heart and put that out there. And you know, think, don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid to try something different. Don't be afraid to be the first one to come up with a new idea and then push and push and follow that. Um, I mean, that's, that's what memories mm. are made from. That's where character comes from. Beautifully said, you are today's power player. Daryl Bedboni, thanks for being here today. You got it, thank you for having me. We'll be right back.